Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm here with another one of my Archive 5 videos. I don't know why I did this with my hands. I've done that for each of these for some reason. And basically, this is just a compilation of five unreleased videos, all wedged together into one super video. So this is five tags that I did and never got around to posting. So, uh, timestamps in the description below and in the video here as well, so you can skip it if you want to see a specific one. And today we have the BookTuber BookTuber tag. We have the self-love tag, we have Josh's muffin tag, the first adult book tag, and the philosopher's tag. So yeah, enjoy. You know the drill by now. I'll see you soon. Today, I'm watching Pucks and Paperbacks. Alyssa, she's uh, doing an unhaul. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the uh, booktuber booktuber tag. So I was tagged by Miriam from Between Lines and Life, and basically there are a series of 11 questions here, and they're all about different booktubers, so you answer them with a, a booktuber that you enjoy. So without further ado, I guess let's get started. <laughs> Actually, before we do get started, I should point out, I am kind of doing this as a way of doing a shout outs video as well, especially because um, some of the channels on this list, uh, you know, plus 1000 subscribers and, and I actually think we do need, as much as I think we do need to support small booktubers, I think we need to be a bit more flexible when we're doing shout out videos with the 1k subscribers limit thing. Because after all, it is also 4,000 hours of watch time. And let's be honest, some of the big booktubers are really good as well. So it, it's, it almost seems weird to do it. Maybe we should do like, you know, five booktubers in a shout out and have one big booktuber and four smaller ones or something like that to get a nice balance. That's what I think, anyway. So, I guess I'm using this as a way to redress that by shouting out various channels that I like. And, yeah, we're just going to go with it. So, question one. Who is your booktuber OG? And by this, I assume it's all about, you know, who is the first booktube channel that you really got into. And so, for me, that is Missy from Binge Reader. So, I've been watching Missy for, it must be about four years now, maybe a little bit more. I mean, her channel's amazing. She's a big Stephen King fan. She does a lot of unboxing, so I know she gets the uh, Nocturnal Reader's Horror Box, which I like to, to see what she gets out of that. I mean, she just has fantastic taste. She's she's one of the first, or, or one of the few big booktubers that I know of, or that I even used to watch back in the day, who does horror a lot. And uh, I think it's great, so shout out to you, Missy. You are my booktuber OG. Question number two, what booktuber is so incredibly smart? So there can only really be one answer to this, I think, and that is Indie Insomniac. Have you seen his videos? They're just so good, like, oh, it's unbelievable, like, especially his discussions, but equally his reviews as well. They're so well structured. You know, I imagine he puts a lot of time into writing scripts for these things and making, sh like, damn sure that his inflections and everything are just spot on. And it makes his videos just a joy to watch. And um, his style of actually kind of almost animating the videos as well is just, it's quirky and I enjoy it. So question number three, who do you wish was your booktube sister? And for me, it's actually Miriam from Between Lines and Life. And what's funny is that she had me as her booktube brother. And I think it's just because we have that kind of relationship, I think. And um, yeah, I mean, she's just a really nice girl. And also, I, I also figured out, right, if, if I am her brother, then perhaps that means I live in her house, which has a library inside the house, which I'm fine with, you know. Plus, actually, if we were brother and sister, I would be much better at speaking German by now. So far, the only German that I know is from Rammstein lyrics, such as Ich dürfte keinen Nippel lecken, which means I wasn't allowed to lick nipples. Question number four. Who do you wish was your booktube brother? So for this, I have gone for the one and only Catalyst Reads. I think we're both similar ages. In fact, I think we're both the same age. We both have very similar reading tastes as well. And we just get along really well. I, I just love watching his channel. I love taking parts in his discussions and that kind of thing. Really nice dude. And, uh, you know, I, can you imagine if m me, Miriam and Michael were all siblings? It would be amazing. Imagine we would all live together. We'd all be there in our 20s now just being like, let's just get a house together. Question number five, who is the hardest working social media booktuber? And I challenge anybody to not say Harriet Rosie for this. Miriam said Harriet Rosie and she's right. She Harriet Rosie is the hardest working booktuber. And the reason for that is just, if you go onto her bookish stars group on Facebook, she's created this amazing community, bringing all these booktubers together. She's created something called bookish writers, which is a Slack group. So basically it's kind of instant messaging. So writers can keep in touch with each other and ask for feedback on first drafts and stuff. 
I mean, she's all over Twitter. She did when Small Buck Tuba Sunday was first a thing. Uh, Harriet basically launched that single handedly, <laughs> like, and, uh, you know, moderated a live chat and stuff. She's done, you know, Thriller a Thon. She's just such a great asset to our community. So, shout out to Harriet. Question number six Who is your BookTube crush? Well, it's a good job I'm filming this on a day that my girlfriend isn't here, isn't it? Oh, Jesus. I think she does watch most of my videos as well. So, if, if she's watching this, hi. But also, I didn't want to do a cop-out answer for this. I can't remember who I saw, but I saw somebody said that Graham Quigley was their uh, booktube crush. And he is actually probably my man crush. Because he's such... He's just a... He's such a handsome, dapper gentleman. So, um... But somebody said that he was their crush, and then he was in the comments being like, oh, thank you. So you get these weird cringy moments where, you know, I think everyone on here is beautiful. But in particular, there are two people that I wrote down who I think I should shout out, because I think they are my buckish crushes. So there is Momes from Peachy Fishy Books. And I don't know why, I just, I just, she's, yeah. Oh God, this is so cringy. Um, yeah, she's just, She's just very sweet and cute and pretty. <laughs> and there is also Cody from Cody's Bookish Corner. And Cody, part of the reason for this actually, well, so I can give you two reasons straight away. She reads lots of books and she has a Northern English accent. But um, both of them as well, they're just both very, very funny girls. And I guess that's what I like. Well, I like reader girls who make me laugh. Like, that is my ideal woman. Oh, and if you can play bass guitar, even better. And sing backing. Mm. All right, moving swiftly on. Question number seven. What booktuber's party would you want to go to? I would want to go to Todd the Librarian's party because I think Todd would throw a good party. I mean, Todd Todd is a man of the world. He's He's been places. He's achieved things. He's like... He's done lots of weird stuff. Like, get him to show you his photo collection. It'd be great. But equally, you know, in every one of his videos, he's got a beer and a cup. So at Todd's party, I believe it would be beer in a cup for all. Hurrah! Question number nine. What booktuber would you like to go with to lunch? And by this I believe it means, what booktuber would you like to go to lunch with? For this one I'm going for Chrissy Books and Berries because if you watch her books x coffee videos, uh, which I think she does one a month, you get to see her going around having coffee and reading books and I think the natural next step would be for us to go out and have you know a light lunch then a bit of coffee, then maybe, I want to go to the bookstore that she goes to because um, it's really sad actually, she, she kind of is on like, not first name terms, but she's on a friendly terms with the security guard that works at her books, at the bookstore she goes to, and he's uh, retiring or moving on to pastures new. So I would like to go out for lunch with Chrissy, then we're going to go to this bookshop and say hello to this security guard before he leaves, and then we'll go and have a bit of coffee afterwards and just probably sit in silence and read our books, but... I mean, that sounds like a good day to me. Question number nine, who would you want as your booktube best friend? So for this, this one's a tricky one really because I, I think a lot of people on booktube are really close friends with me, you know. And I'm going from the fact that the title of this, who would you want as your booktube best friend? I'm gonna say Hardback Hoarder because, well, I, I subscribed to her channel not that long ago actually, maybe six months ago or something like that. It was still before I started making videos of my own. But um, she recently did one of Catalyst Reads tags which was super cool because she's showing the support for the kind of smaller booktubers. And she also subscribed to my channel as well which was super cool. So, hi. And um, yeah, her videos are just really entertaining. And I just, I think she would be just fun in real life. You know, I think we would get up to shenanigans. And um, yeah, she drink wine and I drink beer and then we'd... We'd probably go to events, like literary things, and just, I don't know what we'd do. But I think it, I think she would be a good friend to have. Question number 10, who is the booktube ingenue? So, like most people, I don't know, I find the term ingenue, I looked up the definition of it, and I find it to be contradictory. I mean, it's it doesn't really work as a word from my point of view. But basically, the definition I found is that someone who is... Uh, Oh, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Hey Google, what does ingenue mean? Okay, so an innocent or unsophisticated young woman. So based on the young woman bit, and I guess on the innocent bit as well, I don't know who I am to judge really, uh, I'm going for sophisticated reads. However, I don't think she's, didn't it just say an innocent 
and or unsophisticated woman. I mean, she's so feasticated. She's very sophisticated, you know. Um, but she is a young girl. I mean, she's 14, which is half my age, which is terrifying. And she reads such a diverse collection of books. I mean, she does read, say, some YA, but equally she'll read Jane Austen. Me and her, we're gonna, uh, sorry, uh, she and I, no, me and her, I think is me. I don't know, she can probably correct my grammar at this point as well. But, but um, we're gonna read The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood later as well. And I just wish I was as well read as her when I was her age, if that makes sense. And finally, question number 11, what booktubers deserve a shout out? So I'm gonna use this also as a way to tag people. And I'm going, for my new method of tagging which is that I'm basically going into my comments on YouTube and trying to tag people who um, you know maybe I interact with once or twice and they watch my videos and I watch their videos but they're not people I've tagged all the time like there's no point me tagging Todd the librarian again you know he'll just take the tag if he wants to see it so on that note I am going to tag Night Fear who is a fellow Stephen King fan I am gonna tag books like whoa who is a fellow Agatha Christie fan. <laughs> and I'm going to tag, and I'm going to tag Madeline Swan, who is one of the few people, well, it's the first person I've ever met that knows a specific other author I know called Lisa Cantoral, who writes bizarro fiction. And actually she does, Madeline reads quite a lot of bizarro horror and just weird pulpy stuff, it's great. So yeah, you three are tagged in particular, but equally, everybody who's mentioned in this video, consider yourself tagged. If you're watching this and you wanna do it, tag yourself as well. Dobby says hi, and we are done. So, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, drop a comment to let me know which of these channels you watch as well. And uh, in the meantime, I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye. Today I am watching Ridiculous, Gemma and Emma. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be taking the self-love book tag. So this was created by Sophisticated Books, and she tagged me in her original video, so thank you Sophie. Be sure to check out her channel, I'll link to it below, because her channel is awesome. And we have a series of questions, as usual. I have a few books, I don't have loads of books for this one. Because a lot of them aren't, you know, which book questions. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, question number one. How do you treat yourself when you finish a new book or accomplish a goal? So for me, I pick up another one. That is my treat, really. Um, I read a lot of books. I mean, like, if I had a chocolate bar for every book I finished, I would be, I would be a, a bigger man. I would be, like, I don't want to say fat because... I don't like calling people fat, but I would be fat. Yeah, I read like maybe 20 odd books a month or something, so I, I just pick up another book. That is my treat. And usually I know what book I'm gonna pick up next as well, so I get excited and I look forward to it. Question number two, what place do you turn to have your light bulb moment? A place where you can get new ideas and get rid of a creative block. I would like to say the answer for this is in the shower. I don't actually really like having showers. I, I shower in like five minutes, you know. I don't take long and I have music on as well. But I do sometimes have some ideas in the shower. But I honestly think most of those ideas come to me when I'm lying in bed and trying to sleep and I have these great ideas. And I have to like either get up and write it down or send myself an email to be like, don't forget this. Question number three, what is your guilty pleasure read? Now, I don't really have guilty pleasures per se, but in the spirit of the question, I guess it would have to be Cassandra Clare. And this is City of Bones. And I've been reading one of her books a month with a few other people on booktube. Shout out to Kit Kats Can Read, Damien Tariquez, and Lisa West Coast Read. Lisa West Coast Reads. Sorry, Lisa. I can never say your channel name because it's long. <laughs> but anyway, I mean... To be honest, I, did, I mean, I independently picked up the first book in the series just to see what it was about, you know. But then I'm, I've kind of continued reading it with those guys. And really, I'm, I'm mainly reading it just to see, how, you know, why so many copies have sold and what I can steal and, and implement in my own books. So, uh, haven't, haven't found the formula yet, but I'm working on it, guys. I'll let you know when I get there. Question number four. What is your biggest asset on BookTube? Take off the modest mask. This is all about loving and appreciating yourself. What do you do amazingly as regards to the making of your videos? So for me, I think, I guess there are two things. I think one of them is that I have a fairly decent camera and microphone. So my video and audio is pretty good. I have lighting as well, which I normally use because half the time I film at night anyway, because I'm a night owl. But um, 
even in the daytime. I still use the lighting to try and have a consistent look and feel, I guess. I mean, I have my little backdrop. It's kind of colourful, maybe. I guess my personality helps. Um, I don't think I'm a particularly good at editing, but it does the job, you know. And I think the other the other main thing, actually, is just consistency. I, I release a video per day. Maybe not at the same times, because it just depends when it's ready. So sometimes I'm literally editing a video on the day it goes out, but I, I really enjoy doing it. So I film more than I release, actually. I have a backlog of, of videos. So I guess that the fact that I film more than I release makes sure that I only release ones that I'm really excited about. Question number five. Which fictional career is your dream job? So I've gone for being a dragon trainer from the How to Train Your Dragons books. And this is How to Break a Dragon's Heart, book number eight, which I recently read just because. Because I want to be a dragon trainer. It sounds fun. Okay, question number six. What is your favorite drink to have while reading? Shout out the items or ingredients you love. I guess a beer, which is made from hops usually, and barley, I think, and yeast. I don't know. I don't know what goes into beer. I just put it in my mouth. Or also coffee. I have a coffee down here. It's almost finished actually. It's gone cold. It's, it's usually a lukewarm coffee because I make it and then it's too hot for me to drink and then I forget about it and just drink it when it's cold. Yeah, that was room temperature. Or squash as well, which is just squash and water. Question number seven. What book or self-help book has changed or influenced you in a positive way? And I think it's probably been On Writing by Stephen King. And it's not even that necessarily I followed all of his advice in it. I think a lot of it is the mentality towards writing. So, for example, King is very much a pantser. He has, maybe he knows about his characters and he has his central premise for a book. And then he makes it up as he goes along. Whereas I have found, I, tr I actually tried doing that based partly on what I read in this book. And found that it's not for me. So I'm going to go to plotting actually like I'm gonna be more organized in my plotting look hang on this is actually the the plot to Lightfold book four so driven my recent book is book one this is the plot for book four so I've printed it out and I'm making changes and highlighting stuff figuring out who I need to make character sheets for then I printed out these character sheets that I can write on so you know, that's totally opposite, pretty much, what King says in his book. But, in a way, the book inspired me to do that. It inspired me to find what works for me, you know. And other things that he did say in here make sense as well. Just things like, even make sure you write a certain amount of words per day, every day, on the book. So, I always write. I write every day. But, for example, on the current project, Meet... That's been on a shelf for about two, three weeks because I got edits back on a previous book. And so instead of continuing to write some of me every day and doing the, you know, rewrites for this other book, I've just gone all in on the rewrites. So I'm going to try that with my next book. Question number eight, which fictional world do you think you would thrive in? And not only is this the ne like a fictional world, but this book is the name of the fictional world. And that's Liar is at Oxford from Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy. And it's basically a bit like a sort of a steampunky Victorian world, but with a few elements from our own time as well. And also everyone there has demons, which is amazing. So I think I would thrive in this world. Question number nine. What is your spirit animal? It could be your Patronus or a creature that you think represents you. So I'm going for a wolf. And this is just from a thing a while ago that a conversation I had with a friend and we decided that my spirit animal was a wolf. And so I have taken that to heart and I do think I am a bit wolf-like because I'm a bit of a loner. But I hunt in packs, I guess, I don't know, and howl at the moon. Question number 10. The next step after knowing to love ourselves is loving others. What three authors are you grateful for having inspired you with their stories and writing? So for me, it's probably my three most influential authors on me, I guess, would be Philip Pullman, because he made me fall in love with reading, Terry Pratchett, because he's my most read author, and Stephen King, because I think he's who I admire most as an author, and who I think, you know, I, I like to think big, and so I like to think of him as my biggest competition, because I don't think many, if any, authors are better than King, to be honest. You know, I mean, sure, he has his ups and downs, but so does everyone. And I think King on a good day cannot be beaten. Just my opinion there. 
Alright, and then tag friends. Tag as many people as you can so that they can give themselves some love too. Now, I'm not going to tag as many people as I can because I would be here forever. But I am going to tag three people who I picked out from the comments on some of my previous videos. And they are Cody's Bookish Corner. Number two, crying about books. Because if you're crying about books, you need some self-love. And number three, Margaret the Word Nerd. Except that Ian Nerd is spelled with a three. So there we have it. That is it for the self-love book tag. So thanks a lot for Sophisticated Books for tagging me. And be sure to check out her channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Drop me a comment if you fancy. Hit subscribe for more bookish videos. And I will see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be taking Josh's Muffin book tag. So this was created by Josh from Literary Gladiators. I was tagged in this by Todd the Librarian. Here he is doing that. So this is Who Do You Tag? And I'm going to tag Linda, the book lady, um, Felicia, uh, What the Gemini, Matilda Gothica, Zolata. Um, I'm going to tag Ryan, Madman Reads and Rocks. I'm going to tag... Dane Cobain. And there are 12 questions for this one. I don't have any books. I think there's only one book that I mentioned and it's Mrs. Dalloway and I couldn't be bothered to get it because I don't even like that book anyway. So, and uh, yeah, let's just get started. Before I get started, I should point out these are all, of course, muffin themed, although I haven't heard of half of these muffins. But whatever, let's, let's get started with the muffin question. So question one, Blueberry. If someone said literature, who is the first writer that comes to mind? And for me, it's Graham Greene, and I think that's just because he's one of my favourite writers, and he was probably the first modern classic writer that I really got into and really devoured the books by. You know, before that it was all just R.L. Stein and maybe Philip Pullman and stuff like that, but I think uh, Graham Greene is the first literature author that I wrote, read, I guess. Okay, number two, English. A work of British literature that became easier to understand when discussed. So this is why I've gone for Mrs. Dalloway. To be honest, I can't really think of any examples of this, but we did study Mrs. Dalloway at university. And while it's not that I didn't understand it and then we discussed it and I did understand it, I didn't understand why people would like it. And then some people that did like it talked about it. And I was like, I kind of guess why I understand why you like it, but it's still not really for me. Question number three, corn, a book that is great to take on the go and read at any time. Apparently people do people carry corn around is that where we I don't I don't understand this question Plus what's a corn muffin? Okay. Anyway, whatever the question uh, Yeah, I haven't got an answer for this because I just carry around whatever book I happen to be currently reading I also usually carry around whatever book I plan to read next as well So I was gonna show you what I'm currently reading, but I don't know where it is But any book I mean I carry a rucksack around so I carry like I say multiple books at all times question number four chocolate chip a writer you feel was or has been able to write during all aspects of their lives. So I think most writers qualify for this. I think I myself qualify for this. I mean, I know I'm not an old man yet, but uh, I will continue writing until I die pretty much. And a lot of writers do that. However, I'm going to go for Stephen King, I guess, just because, you know, he's been writing for years. He is an old man now, he's kind of covered everything, including when he used to be young and, you know, a cocaine addict and all this stuff, and then he cleared his life up and did all this and did all that. You know, even after his car accident, he wrote on writing, which I think is very much a product of that time of his life as well. So, yeah, Stephen King, why not? Question number five, oatmeal raisin. A bookish trait you feel is just not necessary. And for me, this is buying brand new copies of books as soon as they're released. Or like, you know, not waiting for the paperback or, I mean, I get a lot of mine just secondhand from charity shops. If you wait six months, people donate the books and then you can pick them up. And again, there are so many good books out there that I don't mind waiting for the new John Green book or whatever because I'm still working through the classics and I'm still working through Isaac Asimov or whatever. And then I've still got some Peter James books and some Stephen King and all this other stuff. So... It doesn't bother me. I don't have to buy a brand new copy of a book as soon as it's released. And it bothers me just because it costs people a lot of money. And I don't think they need to spend that much money. But 
Hey ho, if people didn't do that, then I wouldn't be able to buy those books really cheaply in charity shops, I guess, after they get bored and donate them. Question number six, Bran. What kind of reading material do you find you constantly force yourself through? So, I read a bit of everything, and I honestly can't really say I force myself through anything. If I'm not enjoying it, I just DNF it. So the only thing I can come up with it for this is my emails, which is a boring answer, but I do have to constantly force myself to keep up to date with them. Question number seven, a cranberry orange. Which two characters from different works would you like to see in one? So for this, I've gone for the two greatest detectives in the world, Mr. Hercule Poirot and Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I think the two of them in one story would be fascinating, not least because I think they'd hate each other as well. Question number eight, coffee cake. If you could see any poet, dead or alive, recite poetry at your cafe, which one would it be? Now, I don't own a cafe, which may surprise you, but um, I guess I would go for Charles Bukowski, especially because he was a raging alcoholic. So if nothing else, it would just be fun to see what he did. But also he hated doing readings as well. So I just think, you know, yeah, why not? Question number nine, Cruffin, Croissant Muffin, a great short work of French literature. So for this, I guess any Guy de Maupassant short stories, we read a few of them at uni and they were fantastic. He's considered a master of the art and they are short. Question number 10, Muffin Top, a work that would be better abridged. So for this, I'm just basically saying every Cassandra Clare book. I mean, granted, I've only read three of them, but I have felt as though each of them could have been 100 pages shorter and it would have been more impactful and, you know, more of a page turner. I think I think it's meant to be a page turner, but every now and then you just get these big long bits of exposition that just put the story on hold for a while. Question number 11, what is your favorite muffin? My favorite muffin is blueberry muffin. I like blueberries. Also, I don't really like chocolate. I get a bit sick of chocolate, so blueberry muffin, that'll do nicely. Question number 12, let's go to Drury Lane. Who do you tag? So as usual, I'm tagging three people. These are people taken from recent comments on my videos and I'm gonna tag words, words everywhere. I'm gonna tag brushing bookends and I'm gonna tag novel crawler. And those are also three excellent channels. So I urge you to go and check them out. So there we have it. That is my take on Josh's muffin tag. Thanks a lot for watching. Let me know what you thought of my answers in the comments. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to do the first adult book tag. So this was created by Dave at Wild Reads, and I was tagged by Brian's Bookshelves and somebody else who I can't remember, so I'm really sorry about that. Please don't tell anybody that I forgot your name. It was an accident. So this tag has nine questions, and basically the, the idea behind it is you, you pick up the first adult book that you can remember reading, and you answer a series of questions, you know, specifically about that book. The problem that I have is that I don't really remember too much of my childhood and I was reading like at a really young age so I don't actually know what my first adult book was. The first adult book that I remember reading was Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens and I wasn't very old, I was about 10, something like that. I was at my, um, it was after my parents got divorced but before my they sorted their living situation out. So in fact it was probably younger, probably like eight or nine, <laughs> something like that. And I was at my um, grand's house, we were living there. And yeah, there was a copy of Oliver Twist lying around, so I picked it up and read it. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> so, however, it's been a long time since that happened, so I don't know how good these questions and answers are actually gonna be. But I guess we'll find out. So, question one. What's the first adult book called and who wrote it? Well, my first adult book is Charles Dick. That's not, that's not the right way around. My first adult book was Oliver Twist and it was written by Charles Dickens. You might have heard of him. Question number two, what made you choose this book? Uh, I don't know, it was, I mean, this was over 20 years ago, so I can't, I can't remember. But, well, well, why did I pick it? I mean, I guess it was lying around. Uh, at, at around a similar age, I also picked up Treasure Island and I did DNF Treasure Island at that time. Because, I mean, it's not exactly the easiest language when you've been used to reading things like, you know, horrible histories and stuff. But, um, yeah. What made me choose it? I don't know. Yeah. It was there, and I'd heard of Oliver Twist. <laughs> it probably wasn't the cover, because they all look like this. They're horrible. Question number three. What genre is it in? I mean, it's a classic, I guess. I, I don't know. You could kind of call it, it's like a, 
It's like a gangster book. It follows a criminal gang. It's a bit like the 19th century version of Snatch, I guess. <laughs> Question number four, do you still read that genre? Yes, I do still read classics. I mean, the, the beauty about classics is that you can never read them all. There are always loads of them. I don't read as many as I, as I uh, would like to, actually. I've been reading a lot more modern classics recently as opposed to, say, Dickens or even, you know, people from before that era. I need to read more Shakespeare. Got some up there on my shelves. Question number five, is the book still in print? Yes, I, I think I think Oliver Twist has probably never gone out of print. I don't know. I haven't researched it, but yes, I, I imagine it, it it will be in print for many years to come. Still, question number six: Have you read anything else by the same author? I've read A Christmas Carol, which I heartily enjoyed. Tried to read Bleak House once and got bored. That's, that's about it. Yeah, sorry, Charlie. Oh, I had the uh, mystery of Edwin Drood once, and I DNF that as well. Question number seven: Have you reread the book since? I think so. So I think back in the day, I actually read it about three times because again, I, I didn't have many books at the time, really, and I think that was the only adult book I guess I had access to. So I definitely remember reading it a couple of times, but I don't know whether I read it cover to cover or whether I just skipped into certain bits. Like I always like the bits with Bill Sykes and Nancy, and especially. The, the, the end bits of, of that where, uh, well I don't want to view spoilers but towards the end of that relationship anyway, that was kind of my favourite part I think. Dickens was only 25 when he wrote this, what am I doing with my life? Question number 8, did you like it then and do you like it now? I did like it then, I feel as though I liked it more then than I would now. I mean I don't really like doing rereads anymore and I mean it is a long old book. I guess when, you know, this is weird and this probably accounts why I read so many books in a month and it's to do with my anxiety really but be Because there are so many books and so little time and life is finite I don't like spending time either rereading or reading like books that are pretty long I mean this is 460 pages, but an absolutely tiny print, you know And I just think I could read four or five other books in the same time but when I was a child, I didn't have any of that fear and I had no concept that life was finite. So I was quite happy reading this over a period of like four months or something. So so I think I did enjoy it more then because I was happier to take my time with it. Whereas now it would just infuriate me, I think. And question number nine, who do you tag? So I'm going to tag a few people that I haven't tagged before. I'm trying to use this as a way to do more shout outs. But the three people I tag are three of my favorite channels to watch at the moment and they are... Sophisticated Books, who is 14, but who has probably already read Oliver Twist and the rest of Dickens because she's just mad clever. I bet she was reading books like this when she was like 10 as well. Uh, then we're going to tag On The Stoop, and then we're going to tag Sarah Ossie SFF, or Ozzie maybe. It's spelled Ossie, so we're going to go with it. But uh, yeah, she talks about SFF, science fiction and fantasy, and um, I really enjoy her videos actually. I, I like that she quite clearly just does not give a shit. Like, she reminds me of Todd in that respect. Like Todd will just make videos where he just says it how it is and he doesn't care if you, if you don't agree with him. Whereas like, I'll be like, oh no, please don't be offended by my views. These are just my views. On that note, thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more bookish videos. And I will see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot, bye bye. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm doing the Philosopher's Tag. So this was created by Miriam from Between Lines and Life, and I encourage you to check out her original video, not least because she knows about philosophy, and I don't really know about philosophy. She's actually a philosophy student, in case you're wondering uh, where the theme of this, this tag came from. So, as always, there are a bunch of questions based on different philosophers. You'll get the picture as we go along. I have selected a bunch of books which I am going to talk about and I'm going to go through, answer the questions and tag some people at the end to continue this tag. So without further ado, let's get started. Question 1. Thales is considered the first known philosopher. Which text introduced you to philosophy or which text would you like to read to get you into philosophy? So I've gone for a bit of an obscure one here and this is Thomas Flint, Happy Lemons, How Laughter Breeds Success. And this is a book that I got sent to me. Basically, Thomas Flint takes us on a journey, examining the roots of laughter, exploring its various purposes, why we laugh, and its benefits at work. So, I guess it's not 
it's not exactly deep philosophy like Voltaire or anything, but this is what came to mind because it is a kind of, it does contain a kind of philosophy with inside it. I mean, the guy's a bit of a hippie. He talks about the healing power of laughter and that kind of stuff, but it does make a lot of sense, a lot of the things he, he says and the way uh, we ought to approach our lives. Question two. Karl Marx is a political philosopher turning the world upside down with the Communist Manifesto. Which political event or event in history would you like to read more about in fiction? And for me, I think like 1960s stuff and like the counterculture movement and, you know, the rise of the hippies and all that kind of stuff. And equally, I mean, I guess more beat stuff. I read a lot of beat poets and beat writers and that's all very autobiographical and I would definitely like to read more of that. So yeah, I think... You do see 1960s stuff here and there, but it's not always done very well, and I would like to see more, specifically, more good 1960s stuff. Question 3. Jean-Jacques Rousseau highly influenced the Enlightenment, a period which introduced critical thinking to the common people. Which book or author forced you to think more critically? And for this one, I have gone for The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins, and the reason I've gone for this is that, I mean, I'm an atheist anyway, and I was an atheist when I started reading this, but I think it made me think about my own beliefs a lot more. and It made me start to think about, like, how I communicate those beliefs, and, you know, I think there's a danger, especially for atheists, that we can end up almost being atheists on faith, in the same way that people are religious on faith. You know, we just, we just believe that there is nothing there, but we don't look at some of the different arguments for religion and then look at the ways that they can be debunked and that kind of stuff. Question number four, Voltaire once said, I do not agree with what you have to say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it. Which is a popular book that everyone seems to love, but you didn't? And I've mentioned this as an answer before uh, on, on a few of my tags, and this is a Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. And I just think it was overhyped for me, and I thought the story behind the story was better than the story itself. Question number five, Hannah Arendt. Deemed controversial even by her friends, Hannah Arendt did not shy away from telling what she thought was true. Name a book that will leave readers uncomfortable, but tells an important story. And I've got The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. This is actually a Penguin Reader's version, so this is for, for children rather than for adults. Uh, I should probably read the full, unedited version really, shouldn't I? Question number six. You must have chaos within you to give birth to a dancing star. A wonderful quote from Nietzsche out of Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Which book do you go back to for its beautiful writing? So for me, this is just any Charles Bukowski, and the title itself should give you a feel for it. So the title is The Days Run Away Like Wild Horses Over the Hills. And what I like about Bukowski is that he uses quite simple language, and he talks about like the darker side of humanity, like gambling and prostitution and alcoholism and all this kind of stuff. But um, his, his sentences themselves are actually beautiful. Let me flick in at random. So this is called And the Moon and the Stars and the World. Long walks at night, that's what's good for the soul. Peeking into windows, watching tired housewives trying to fight off their beer-maddened husbands. And I just think his language is very evocative. Question number seven. Jean-Paul Sartre raised the question, what is literature in one of his books? What is good literature for you? And for me, it's anything that can make the reader feel something, anything that can move them. And that's why literature is so interesting because it's so subjective. What moves me might not move you. And that's why I've got to say people like Sarah J. Maas and, you know, I don't know, Holly Black, the YouTube Cassandra Clare, although I have actually read one of her books. But that's why they, that is literature. Whether you like their books or not, it is literature because it moves people and it makes them feel something. Question eight, Albert Camus. Which book did you have to keep pushing through because you really wanted to understand its meaning? This might be Camus as well. I don't know how you pronounce his bloody name. This is The Odyssey by Homer. And this is an act actually a, an Oxford University publishing press edition that they sent to me. And it's in hardback. And it's really beautiful. But um, I've been struggling to get through it. I'm on page 18. I'm that far in. So there's still a fair amount for me to go. <laughs> but I do. I want to understand its meaning. But it's just very dense. Actually, the translation that I've got is very approachable. It's like understandable. I know what's happening, it's just a lot of words per page, so I sit down to read it and I've cleared five pages or something. Question number nine, which are the three philosophers you would love to sit down and have a chat with? 
Okay, now you may have noticed from my answers to this tag and my pronunciation for people's names, but I don't know much about philosophy. So I've gone again for three whose names kind of stand out to me and kind of mean something. I'm going to go for Nietzsche because, you know, I like his school of thought. I'm going to go for Voltaire, even though I recently DNF'd Candide and other stories by Voltaire because I found his writing to be too inapproachable for me. And I'm going to go for Albert Camus because, or Camus, however you say it, because he's in my mind now. Okay, Google, who is Albert Camus? According to Wikipedia, Albert Camus was a French... Bollock. And on that note, that's the end of the question. So I'm going to tag people. So I'm going to tag Todd the Librarian, Graham Quigley as well, and Mindy's Book Journey. So have fun trying to figure out the ins and outs of philosophy because this was actually quite a difficult tag to do, but I wanted to do it because, again, it's a it's an original tag, not by me, but by Between Lines and Life, by Miriam, who tagged me. And uh, I always try and do those ones first because I think, you know, these new tags need support. So... You know, if, I, if you're watching and I didn't tag you, you are now tagged. There we go. And in the meantime, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And uh, I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye.